What is going on, Diesel Nation? We're excited to have you guys with us today. We're going to be talking about torque converters. And torque converters can almost get lost in the shuffle of diesel performance. We're usually talking about engines and turbos and you know, injectors and full transmissions, but the torque converter can really make or break a setup. And torque converters themselves can be confusing even to industry pros or guys who've been racing for years or decades. And we're going to sit down today and talk with Terry from Precision Industries, and he's been building converters for diesel trucks since the very start. So the amount of knowledge, experience, skill, and expertise that him and his crew have is second to none. So we're going to ask him about stall speeds, why a billet cover is important, what torque multiplication is, why the factory converters fail, and, and things that you should ask or look for when you're shopping for a torque converter. We also want to welcome Precision Industries as a sponsor to the Diesel Podcast. We're really excited to be working with them and their crew to bring knowledge and information to you guys about torque converters. So when you get to the point of needing one, you have all the information you need to make a well-informed buying decision and your truck performs better. We also want to thank Dan's Diesel Performance for sponsoring the podcast. They're a great crew over there. They've got a complete lineup of drop-in turbo kits for LB7 to LMLs. So if you're looking for improved airflow, you're towing, racing, taking it to the track, they've got them in stock on the shelf ready to go. And if you have questions about you know, what turbo to run, if you need any other upgrades, how should you build your truck around this new turbo, just hit them up. Go to dansdieselperformance.com. They've got their phone number right there if you'd like to chat with someone, ask them questions, or if you're ready to buy, you can do it right on the site. All right, let's get to the podcast talking about torque converters. This is Corey Willis with PVI, and you're listening to the Diesel Podcast. I'm Adam Blattenberg from Diesel World. Hi, I'm Clint Cannon from ATS. This is Dan, owner of Dan's Diesel Performance. I'm Dimitri from No Zone Diesel. I'm Cass from Diesel Doctor of Tennessee, and you're listening to the Diesel Podcast. Terry, it is great to have you on the Diesel Podcast today. We've got a ton of torque converter questions lined up for you, and we wanted to, to talk with you and about your business, how long you guys have been building torque converters, and just kind of grill you about uh, diesel torque converters and how they can help trucks. Oh yeah, we uh, we've been building converters for for quite a while. I moved Precision Industries from California 25 years ago because it got too difficult to do business in California. In California, I had a a transmission and a torque converter rebuilding facility, and we decided we'd leave California while we could still afford it. And when you when you started with torque converters. Did you did you guys start with trucks or race cars or how did how did it come to be? Well, we started with rebuilding OEM converters mainly for cars and and trucks. And uh, I used to do make these converters that we make now by hand in the evening after work as a hobby. And when I sold the transmission business and the torque converter rebuilding business. My wife asked me, uh, what are you going to do for a living? So when we checked where we sold all these converters, these handmade ones, they were all on the east side of the Mississippi River. So uh, I decided I would move on the east side of the Mississippi River, and because I raced fuel funny cars for 12 years for a living, I knew a lot of people in Memphis, Tennessee that were racers. I figured I could move here start the business if it failed i could get a job with one of my friends <laughs> with uh with torque, torque converters and the you know the questions we get from our listeners or discussions that <clears throat> that we read is there can be you know like a the the guys who are really into diesel performance they've been following it for years so they they know about single disc and multi-disc and tons of different things and then we have a lot of people who are new to diesel and they know, you know, there's a torque converter that bolts to the flex plate and it, it you know, drives the transmission and, and all that sort of stuff. But I wanted to start kind of with the basics. And if you could explain what a stock converter is built like, what are some of the components are, and then what you can do in the aftermarket with Precision Industries to make that converter better. And I'm sure we'll get into racing and towing and things like that. But just what you've seen, you know, in the OEM and then what you're able to do to improve it. Well, the, the OEM type converter works great in a, in a regular stock truck driving back and forth to work. The problem being is that everybody that I know of that owns a diesel has uh, increased the horsepower on it. <laughs> and once you do this, now you start having problems with converter shutter 
and burning up the clutch. And when that happens, you know, all the trash from the clutch material goes through the trans and requires a rebuild. So back in 1994, uh, when I started Precision Industries here in Tennessee, uh, we had a lot of Buick Grand National customers, and they were using a 12-inch stock converter and destroying it on the inside to get the stall up. So we made a smaller diameter converter with multi-disc in it. We were the first ones to ever use multi-discs in aftermarket converters. And uh, so we just transferred that to the diesel market when we started seeing the horsepower increases in diesel and the clutches disappearing and tearing up stock converters. So in 1996, um, we, we did a lot of development work, and we've, you know, come up with the uh, converter for the Cummins, for the Duramax, and for the Ford Power Stroke multi-disc converters. And that, that's basically the difference between ours and a stock converter. Now, the other thing I want to tell you is that we manufacture most everything that goes in uh, our diesel converters. You know, the stator we manufacture, uh, you know, the clutches, the clutch plates, the drive plates, the front cover. Uh, we manufacture, and we can keep really close tolerances on everything. And that's basically one uh, another reason over the OEM. The OEM is mass-produced. The front cover is stamped. It's 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 very weak when you add horsepower to the uh, engine. It wants to tear the mounting lugs off the front uh, of the cover, and you know when that happens, the clutch fails, and you go down the hill from there. Now, as far as a multi-clutch converter, what does that allow the the truck owner to do above and beyond, say, you know, like a, a stock? a stock converter, you know, obviously there's better parts in it, but when you go to multiple clutches, what does that allow for capability or, or longevity with a converter? Number one, you know, the stock converters have anywhere from 47 to 60 square inches of uh, clutch area. When you triple that, we get upwards of 120 to 130 square inches. So now the holding power becomes very, very strong. Uh, we did our test first our test years ago with the triple disc and only adding a hundred pounds per square inch in the converter. And when we tested on a torque machine, it broke the machine at twenty one hundred foot pounds of torque. So that'll tell you it'll the triple disc uh converter will handle sled pulling, it'll handle drag racing, uh it'll handle twenty thousand pound you know, trailers that you pull, and uh, it it's uh, it's all around. You know, great. It's not only for racing or sled pulling, but a lot of guys just want uh, to have the capability of knowing that their clutch isn't going to fail. Because even in stock trucks, once they get the mileage on them and they've used them to tow their boat or whatever, they get the clutch hot. And that brings the resins of the glue up to the surface of the stock clutch. And when it's, when that happens, that turns that surface into a slick surface, like a piece of linoleum. Okay. That's where you start getting converter shutter and uh, check engine lights and so on and so forth going on. I know with in, in trucks I've either dro you know, drove or, or rode around in, that have an upgraded converter, you can feel the difference in it. And it, it's, it, it kind of leads into the next question or, or something that I, I know I'm very confused on. I kind of understand it a little bit, but I know a lot of our listeners are going to want to know about the relationship between torque multiplication and then when the converter goes into lockup. Like, what is lockup? What can you do as a converter company to improve that feel just taken off you know, from zero mile per hour up to 30 with the converter. And then once it locks, what can you do then to improve the driving experience as well? In the converter, most diesel converters have a stall torque ratio somewhere between 1.6 and 1.9 because they want it to, you know, when it's in a stock configuration, 
without adding horsepower to it, um, you know, it goes from A to B with no problems. Um, what we end up with when we get in the converter to modify it, we can change the way the stator uh, uh, geometry is, or the way the impeller geometry is. We can raise the stall. We can ro uh, lower the stall depending on the customer's needs. And uh, like guys with big turbos, you know, the stock type stall speed won't work because they can't get up on the turbo. It has to have a looser converter in it. Likewise, guys that you know, have, you know, real low in horsepower, you know, they'll want a tighter converter. So we go, what we do is we talk to the customer and, you know, see exactly what he needs or what we think he needs and we build a converter from there. And, uh, with the, uh, the, the triple disc clutches, what happens when they lock up, it's like having a standard shift in the truck. It's a one-to-one -one ratio. How the torque multiplication works is at a stall speed, you may set it, let's just say it has two-to-one stall torque. Okay, it's multiplying engine torque two-to-one in stall. Okay, as the truck moves, the stator starts to rotate and the multiplication starts to drop. And it drops down, in theory, it drops down one to one. That's in theory. The problem is that this is a fluid coupling. So you'll probably never get uh, efficiency better than a 5% slip to 10% slip. And if it's a loose type converter, it might slip as high as 15%. So that, that's, that's what we can do. Now, people are confused about stall speed. There are three kinds of stall speed in our industry. There's the true stall, there's flash stall, and there's brake stall. And what stall means is when you try to hold the truck back and push the throttle to the floor, that's the RPM you'll see where the RPM quits rising. Now, in brake stall, you know, on most four-wheel drive trucks, you can hold the converter. <clears throat> but on a two-wheel drive truck, usually... Uh, it'll pull through the brakes and the truck will start to move. <clears throat> Whatever that is where the truck starts to move uh, in brake stall, that's brake stall, okay? That is not true stall. The next stall on the list is flash stall. Flash stall is from a standing start, just sitting there idling and tromping the, floor, uh, the, the throttle pedal to the floor and seeing where the tack rises to. That's flash stall. True stall is either using a handbrake or four-wheel drive trucks can do this. They can hold the converter back and going to the floor with it. And within the three to five seconds, whatever the tack reads, that's flat, that's true stall. Now the problem with this is, is if you hold the, uh, the, the truck in stall, let's say you have a four-wheel drive truck and you hold it in stall longer than three to five, six seconds, what will happen is that the vortex exit pressure out of the impeller of the converter, not the transmission, but out of the converter, will get higher than the transmission front pump pressure. So now the transmission cannot keep the converter full of oil. On the other side of the circuit, we have a cooler line. This cooler line is leaking oil out of the converter, running through the cooler and back to the rear uh, planetaries of the transmission. What happens when this happens is we get air in the converter. And when we start to get air in the converter, it becomes inefficient, and now the stall will automatically start to rise. That's when you, you hear people saying, well, yeah, I held it for 15 seconds and finally got up on stall. Well, all they're doing is destroying the converter because it, when you get air in it, uh, it causes it to cavitate and that's when you break veins off the stator and you, you, know, you lay the turbine flames back and so on and so forth. And um, so that's one thing you have to be careful of. And most tor torque converter companies struggle with getting the, the stall up on converters. 
you take the Cummins converter, you know, the, the vanes in the impeller are furnace raised. There's nothing you can do with them. I mean, guys try to bend them and heat them and bend them and so on and so forth. But it doesn't work out well. So <clears throat> you have got to have the capability of allowing or, or manufacturing a converter that, uh, will, you know, will allow you to get up on the turbos without holding it install for 15 or 20 seconds. But how long you guys have been building converters, somebody could call in and say, hey, I've got a 2006 5.9. This is the upgrades I have to it. This is the turbo I'm running. You guys have probably seen dozens or hundreds of trucks that have a similar setup where you guys know for this use, this power level, this torque level, this is the stall speed we need to build for your converter. So it's not a, a guessing game really because of the experience you guys have doing this. Yes, that's that's true. And, uh, you know, we can hit it just about on the head every time. If we don't, you know, which like I, uh, we were talking about before, you know, the converter stall is not an exact science. It depends on how much torque is in front of the converter to where it's going to stall at. So sometimes you, we can hit it the majority of the time. Sometimes we can't. That's why we have a two-year free stall adjustment. All you've got to do is get the converter back to us. We'll change the stall in it, ship it back to you, you know, and it won't cost you a thing to change the stall. And because after you've had it in the vehicle and you tell me what the stall is and with the combination that you have, that's a baseline. And when I get the converter back, uh, I can change it and give you the stall that you, you need. That's a really cool. That's a really cool service that you guys offer because it, we see it a lot, and we talk to a lot of guys on the podcast that are racing and and uh, going all over the country and stuff, and they, you know, they they might need adjustments to it, and it, you know, having to, you know, restall it and pay, you know, for that to be restalled with other places, it can add up pretty quick. <laughs> so, you You're know, right. you guys offering that is it does it saves the racer. You know, or the street, the street truck guy, it saves them money. Guys are always changing their trucks. They're always adding this modification, and always adding that modification. So you have a guy that can triple disc converter, and he just kind of races a little bit on the weekends once in a while. Now he's put, you know, a great big turbo on it, or he's put duels on it, or whatever. And now that converter that's in it doesn't work good, so he can send it back to us. And we'll change it so it will work. The other thing they can use the three, uh, the, the free stall adjustment on is if they have a transmission failure, they can send it back to us. We'll clean it out, check everything, upgrade everything inside it if it's an older converter uh, under that two-year uh, stall adjustment. That just made me think of a question that I, I've had come up before. Just it's usually guys that they listen to an episode where we kind of touched on something and they'll say, Hey, I'm in this situation where they buy a truck and it, it might have an upgraded transmission and it's got some converter upgraded converter in it and the transmission failed. And they think, well, I can just pull the transmission, put new clutches in it, and then just keep the converter the way it was. I'm sure you guys have seen a ton of horror stories when, whatever went through that transmission fluid is now in the converter and you put, you know, uh, upgraded valve body, new clutch packs in, new steels, how that can now destroy the, the transmission that was just rebuilt. And so I wanted to ask you, how important is it if there's ever a transmission failure to make sure the converter is, is cleaned up, inspected before reinstalling it and going down the road? It is one of the most important things you can do. Because you're rebuilding everything in the trans, why would you not have the converter checked and either rebuild or cleaned out or whatever? And, you know, you, otherwise, all the trash that's in the converter is going to get fed right back in to the transmission. You're going to have to start all over again. The other thing that guys don't realize is the coolers on these trucks. Everybody takes them, flushes the coolers out, and so on and so forth. But the really the only thing that cleans the cooler uh, will be hot new transmission fluid. 
and they're not using that to flush the cooler. And you uh, bypass the cooler and add an auxiliary cooler, you know, like uh, like putting a V10 cooler on a, a 7.3. Just bypass the stock cooler and put the V10 on, on it, and that will solve the problems. But no matter what you do, everything has to stay pristine and clean because you only have one to one and a half thousandths between valves and the valve body, and when you get a piece of dirt in it, the valve is stuck, and there's nothing you can do without disassembling it. Yeah, it's, there's so many things that, have, <laughs> that we've read or had questions about, and I'm sure you guys get all the time as well. And you know, a lot of listeners out there are going to want to, you know, know if they buy a truck or they, you know, do an upgraded converter, and then something happens with their transmission. The the important relationship between the two and and the fluid and how clean it is to making sure that it lasts. Yeah, well, you're you know you, you wouldn't allow. You know, small little steel chips in the engine, would you? No. Nope. <laughs> you know, why would you Why would you allow it in your $2,000 transmission, you know? Yeah. Uh, it, it just doesn't make any sense. And uh, But a lot of guys, you know, a lot of guys will spend ten, fifteen, twenty thousand dollars $20,000 on the engine and then complain about spending $1,000 on the trans. Yeah, it's almost, it, it is, it can be like that. I, I've always... I don't remember who told me this once, but um, it was some. It was a truck, and it, the hoods popped on it, and you can see the turbos, and they're shiny, and you see the engine, and you see the the you know the head studs and all the cool parts, and then the transmission. No one really is ever like, I'm going to climb underneath there and look at the transmission. I really want to check it out and stuff, but it's so right. important right. to make right. sure. <laughs> yes, that's true. <laughs> Seems to be like a forgotten thing. <laughs> It does. I wanted to ask you, I know I know for the, our listeners out there, you've given a ton of great information about multi-disc stall speed, fluid coupling, the internal components, you know, all those sorts of things. Is They have a truck. It could be a Cummins, a Duramax, Power Stroke. They've raised the power level or they're planning on a, you know, a build. And they go online or they look in magazines or they listen to podcasts, whatever it might be, and they're trying to decide which converter do I buy. There's a lot of them out there. And I wanted to ask you, what does Precision Industries do when you're making these converters that separate you from the choices out there that consumers have? Why should they pick you guys? All right. Well, number one is our five-year unconditional warranty. And most of our competitors do not have that. They may have a long warranty, but you have to jump through hoops to use it. The second thing, well, our customer service is as good, if not better, than anybody in the industry. Uh, the third thing is our machining capability. We make most of our own parts. We don't have to go outside and buy from somebody else. We have 11 CNC machines that we make everything from stators to covers uh, all the way through. And probably most important things is that uh, until the end of this year, Precision Industries is offering free freight on any purchase over $600. And so that's, that saves quite a bit of money on a heavy converter. That is one of the things that I know a lot of consumers out there don't know how expensive it is to ship a 80 to 90 pound converter. It's not cheap. <laughs> right, right. When you start shipping 60 and 70 pound converters around, it gets expensive. Yep, yeah, it does. <laughs> yeah. And one of the last things I think we're uh, ahead of the market on is our clutch material. And 20 years ago, we invested lots of money to develop a proprietary clutch line for our clutches. Now, our competitors are using Kevlar and high carbon. These are great linings. The problem and the reason they were made is because in a stock condition, stock application, the torque converter is allowed to slip anywhere from 20 to 60 RPM all the time so that the customer doesn't feel it shift and doesn't feel any of the engine pulsations that allows these converters to, uh, to slip. Well, when you're sled pulling or racing and wanting to lock the converter up, you surely don't want that to happen. 
you know, because the coefficient, say, of friction and high carbon is, is, is not like our, our clutch lining. Our clutch lining, uh, will handle the heat and it'll, it'll stay hooked. It'll stay locked up. Uh, the reason the, the factories and everybody went to Kevlar and high carbon was because they slip all the time that had priority, uh, uh, clutch line. And we spent a lot of money developing it. That's very interesting. Yeah, that's, uh, it, it, it's something I think, you know, we, we can overlook when we're looking for converters is, is the material. And, you know, especially, like you said at the very beginning, the, we're, we're turning these trucks up, we're doing stuff to them. And, and what can we do to make them hold up, not just at the racetrack, but driving them or towing a trailer across the country and how all these components, you know, fit together. Right. Um, for the, you know, the, the guys that have the Ram trucks and the F-250s, 350s, the, the, uh, the GM Duramax platform, they're looking for a converter. Do you guys keep most of them in stock? Or if there's a lead time, stay on like a, a custom stall, something like that. How long does it take from a time, you know, someone calls in to when the converter's heading out the door and, and head to their shop or, or to their, uh, their home? We build everything to order. We, first of all, we talk to the customer. We see what he needs. We don't just jerk one off the shelf and send it out there hoping it'll work. We build it for the customer's vehicle. And uh, it usually takes three days. From the time you place the order to the time we ship it, it's three days. And uh, so uh, that's been our policy for 25 years, and uh, it's been, you know, it's very successful for, for us. But you were talking about the the, the billet front covers. Mm -hmm. Now, the whole industry calls the aftermarket covers that aren't stamped billet covers. Uh, ours are not billet covers. A billet is, is a big chunk of metal you carve the part out of. Ours are made from forgings. Now, the difference between a forging and a billet is that when the stamping press stamps the forging out in the shape, uh, close to the shape of what the cover will end up being, the grains of the metal all run uh, in the correct direction in the forging. When you start carving stuff out of a chunk of steel, the grain is already set. It only runs one way. So it's not as strong. And uh, you, you, you can get in, into some problems with that. Number one, most of the you know, people out there use uh, a material called A36 uh, when they when they you know, make their billet covers or machine them out of billet covers. The A36 material is a steel that's used to make bridges and stuff like that. And so they uh, use burnout, what they call burnout plates. The trouble with using A36, it's not a real high quality steel. So once you get your you know, you machine your cover out of it, you know, maybe one out of every 15 cover will have porosity in it. So that cover will be no good because it will leak oil out. And uh, the other uh, uh, material that a lot of them use is 1018 uh, rolled steel. Now, that's a better quality steel, but... If you have a lot of money in the in the blank, plus you have 30% more machine time carving it or machining it out of a piece of slug than you do a forging because a forging is stamped in a die that the shape of the forging is close to what the finished converter will be. So that way, you know, we can save the customer money, we can machine these faster, and we have a better product. The the cover I've seen a few of them before. Uh, they're mostly I think stock ones that I saw, but I wanted to ask you about that because the cover and the word the word billet in the diesel industry is probably way overused and it's so confusing. But like 
I've seen these stock converters where they balloon and, and, and I think, you know, not fully understanding everything going on inside that converter is if you have any deflection or any ballooning or anything on that cover, it has to mess with everything else inside of it. All the tolerances, all the things that the converter's trying to do. And that's why, you know, that the, the cover has to be so important to the rest of, you know, what you guys are putting together inside of it. Right. Well, well, the Cummins and the Duramax, uh, do not have much of a ballooning problem because the, uh, like three sixteenths of an inch thick. The problem in the brewing area is the Ford converter. Now all Ford trans, excuse me, all Ford transmissions have a converter limit valve in them, which limit the pressure in the ground 100 to 115 psi. Okay, that's the pressure that holds the clutch against the front cover. Now, a lot of shift kits, a lot of people out there try to block that that valve off, or they put a higher tension spring in it so that it raises the pressure in the converter. Well, I want to tell you something about a Ford converter. The 7.3 4R100 converter balloons 60 thousandths in the stock condition as soon as you start the truck. So if you start raising pressure in it, it's going to balloon even more. Wow. Now, Ford knew this, so Ford decided, well, we're going to fix it. So when the 5R110 came out, they put a little over on it, front cover. Now, now the 5R100s only balloon 40 thousandths, but they, they still have a problem. Now, we do not use any type of a Ford converter or any parts of a Ford converter for our power stroke converter. We use a 3 stick walled impeller, and we do block the converter uh, limit valve so that we run uh, line pressure in the converter to help hold the clutch on, which uh, it's not truly line pressure. We have the cooler line that's leaking, so it's about 80% of line pressure after we block that valve. But we uh, we do not use any part of a Ford converter in our power stroke converters. They're just, uh, they're just too much trouble. Yeah, I can definitely see how that could just be a recipe for for headaches. And you're limited to what you can do. With with our with our converter for the power stroke, uh, or any of our converters, you know, we can change the, the, the stator in seven different ways. We can change the impeller in seven different ways. So we have a multitude of of stalls that we can add to it. Anywhere from fifteen hundred to probably a four thousand stall. And uh you know, we've built that the Ford converter that way from the start when we started Precision Industries because we were having trouble when we were doing OEM Ford converters the same way. That's very interesting. Yeah, this is, uh, I know that uh, a, lot of, a lot of guys out there, they're, they're doing transmission builds. They're, the, the motors and, and the technology, even with tuning, has progressed so much that, that, truck owners find the limit of the of the factory converter so quickly and and you know, what we've been able to talk about is really helpful you know for all of us and, and myself as well as i it, it it just seems like it's there's this torque converter it does a lot of things and we don't really know what's going on in there but we're spending a lot of money on it and i think being able to understand the, the covers the 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 stall speed um, the, all the things that, that you were able to talk about really helps us make an informed buying decision with it. And I, I think probably torque converters are one of the, one of the aftermarket parts where there's a lot of confusion and truck owners have a lot of questions. And so I know the guys out there listening are going to have them is what's the best way for them to call into precision industries, chat with you guys, ask these questions and make sure that they they get the the converter they need for their specific application. Okay, well, you know, anybody can call our 800 number, which is uh, 800-649-7866. And my sales staff, either Jack or Todd, will be glad to take care of you. 
The other way, you can go to our website, which is www.converter.com. And uh, we're, we're a little bit slow on the, on the Facebook, but if you go to Precision Industries Converters Facebook, it should take you, you'll see our logo when, they, when the icons pop up, and you just click on it. And we're, we're, we're stepping up uh, our Facebook page so that it'll have a lot of information on it also. We'll make sure and put a link. So when uh, when the podcast goes out, whether our listeners are on iTunes or YouTube or whatever it might be, we'll have a link to your site and then to Facebook as well. So if you know, guys are listening on their phones or whatever they might be doing, they can just click the link, go right over there. And you guys have a ton of information and resources on the website, which I've... Uh, before we we chatted i was on there and i was learning a lot of things and like you can see you know what you guys are doing you can see the shop and everything else and i think you gave us a lot to think about with converters and i know when we chat again we're probably gonna have a whole other slew of questions to ask you but this was a really informative and helpful helpful uh podcast and, and being able to chat with you know you've you've been doing it the longest and 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 the capability you guys have with not just the machines, but the experience and the skill is is uh, really what makes you know that transmission, the torque converter relationship, and getting the power to the ground these guys are cranking out so important. So we we appreciate your time today, Terry, and, and your knowledge and experience and sharing it with all of us. I appreciate the uh, capability of what you've offered me, and uh, uh, I just you know want to tell all your listeners. That uh, if you uh, want to email to info at converter dot com and got any questions, uh, we'll try to answer them all. Don't forget, diesel fans, make sure and head on over to dan'sdieselperformance dot com if you're looking for turbo upgrades. You got questions, need help, anything like that. You can just jump on their website. We've got all their information there. They'll help help you get your truck set up the way you want. And also go to converter.com if you want to check out Cummins Duramax Power Stroke Converters that we talked about on this podcast. Go to their website. There's a ton of information as far as all the, all the things we talked about, but it goes more in depth with certain components or if you need to have a custom converter built. And you can fill out a form. You can get it to them. They can let you know what the, they can do for your truck to help it perform the way you want, whether you're racing or driving it on the street. All right, Till next time, keep the shiny side up.